Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020 Working Group Component Standard Office Hours. This is our hour for folks to drop in and ask questions. Uh, I'm Mike Toffin, and I'll be hanging out in the channel. Ooh. Doing well. Your sound is a little bit um, like low. Let me try changing the configuration. Sure. Okay, looks better now? That's better, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you had some questions on the uh, prototype that you sent over. Yeah, you comment some, some stuff there. So yeah. I found... I found some way to do that. I'm not sure if the most correct one, but... Okay. Uh, one one of the ideas, uh, I think the most complicated ones is the last comment you have about having the full values being overrided by the instance and share it. Having the sorry, I missed part of what you said. You had values overwritten by the instance the configuration, the shared configuration. Yes. Yeah. So one way that I was thinking to do that is to not allow the values in the the full values in the instance configuration. So instead of that, we could use a pointer and make it null by default. Yeah, that's one way to do it. I think it's What's tricky is we have this convention of like not using pointers on the internal types so that they always have a value so that the runtime doesn't have to do no pointer checks once it's converted to the internal. So I'm out of ideas. Yeah, so I, um, I have to think about how to do this. The, One, let's see. Hmm. One possible way to do it is Oh, well, let's see. No, that's not when defaulting happens. That would only work for the flags. I was trying to think if we could somehow start with a defaulted object where the quote default values were copied out of the shared one and then parse the, like deserialize the config over that. There might be a way to decode it without defaulting happening. So if, if we could, well, <laughs> we could, could use pointers, but um, the, like, the defaulting is a separate step from the decoding. And it happens on the external type. And it happens, so we basically decode into the external type. And there's this defaulting function that has the custom logic to like check what value set. And if it's um, like a value that's basically not, a user's not expected to set it defaults it, right? So it could be like something is set to zero that is never zero, it's a non-pointer type. So like we'll set it to one as the default. Or it could be it's a pointer type and it's set to nil. So like we'll set it to an actual value as the default. Um, if we, and when you, and that's after it's been decoded. Um, so before it's been deco like decoded, you just have this external type struct that has all of the, um, um, 
just like zero values in it, right? So no pointers, zeros for numbers, empty strings, like all that, right? Empty lists. Um, if we skip, so if, if instead of, the so i think i think during the decoding step i don't think we mutate any i'd have to check this but i don't think we mutate any fields on the external type that are unset in the config file so we only mutate an external type field during decoding if you explicitly set it in the config file. So if there was a way to take some arbitrary object, right, so arbitrary instance configuration and use that as an input to the decode, like that's the thing we decode on top of. If we set all the values in that like all the shared values in that to the same value that was already decoded from the shared configuration and then decode on top of it. Um, and then copy all those back into the shared configuration. We, I think we should end up if the user did not set the value in the instance specific configuration, we should end up keeping the value in the shared configuration the same, which is what we want. It's, it's super complex flow, but I think it, it um, achieves what we want. I have, I have half of the code that you explained it right now in my head, but the other half I, I miss it. I try to re, uh, rewatch okay. this and understand better what you say. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, like there's, you know, I don't know, like if you, if you play with like bit twiddling tricks, like you can do some stuff um, like that, I think. But um, basically we, instead of starting with a zero valued struct, we start with the values that were already set in the shared configuration. And then we, parse the YAML over that so that if a value was set in the shared configuration and not set in the YAML, the value in the instance configuration is already the same as the shared configuration. And then when we copy the instance configuration back over the shared configuration, nothing gets modified because they're already the same. Okay, we are going to copy it again to make sure that it is user values. Yeah, uh, do basically. You write the full values in this decoding part before the instance on the decoding of normal shared configuration. I think, I think, I think go ahead. I think if before defaulting these values, we can try to reuse this instance configurations and maybe set these values and then try to default these things. Yeah. So the default will be always the shared configuration. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Do you think that uh, uh, customizing other tools like these can solve this easier? It's, it's possible, yeah. So there's, <laughs> there's two angles on that cap right, if you read the discussion on there. And, and one is like, you know, try and do what we're doing right now, which I think is gonna get increasingly complicated. But I think, I think it helps our argument if we can show how complicated it is with an implementation, right? And we can say, yes, this is, this is all the requirements we discovered that we need to implement like this case by case basis and look how complicated and hard to maintain it is. Um, if we're going to go down the you know route of trying to come up with a, a more generic merge, because um, my feeling is that the Cube ADM do the same with the the merge patch and customize has this as well. Uh, you know, maybe it's worth to look with the implementation just to get an idea. 
and get more hints on how to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that too, if there's a just a better way to deal with this scenario. Yeah, but uh, I'll try this approach so of, of trying to sell uh, the things that we are talking about right now. Another way to, to do it, um, another way to do it might, well, no, that doesn't really, that doesn't work. I was, I was trying to think if there's a way to do it in the external types. If we, if all the fields in the external types were pointer fields, um, then it would be possible. Uh, this is, this has come up in discussion a few times before. I, there, I can't remember, but there's some reason that we can't migrate them all to pointer fields. Um, the ones we need are like three, right? Right now. The ones that are shared, like two or three fields. Yeah, there's not there's not that many. But the um, oh, that's true. Yeah, we could just say if it's going to be a field that, um, if it's, or here's what we could do. Here's what we could do. This is much easier. We just um, have a requirement that every field in the instance configuration must be a pointer field in the external type of the instance configuration. And right. then our merge, we have to figure out, um, maybe we, we just choose to carry that through to the internal type. Maybe we have a rule that says if it's a shared field, it must also be a pointer on the internal type. And when you read it, you always read it out of the shared configuration, not the instance configuration. It's a little complicated, but at least it, it would carry through the whether or not somebody set it information um, from the external type. It sort of breaks a lot of conventions, but it would work. Yeah, this this po internal pointer work, I have, I have something in a branch here, but it's, it's not the conventional way. Yeah. Um, you could add additional fields to the internal type to indicate whether or not it was set on the external type and write custom conversions uh, that maintain that information. But that would, I, I, the conversion in is easy because you just convert in with like unset equals true but the conversion out of an unset is weird because um, you are, I mean, if it's a, well, I guess if it's a pointer type, it's not super weird. If it stays a pointer type in the external, I, your round trip would, would still work as long as like unset equals true results in no pointer. But then you still, have the problem of needing to like effectively do a no pointer check because you have to check this unset bit. So it's like the same. Um, it's like the same, same thing as having a pointer on the internal from like a semantics perspective, right? Like as, as a user, well, as a user, I either, I'm either told I should only read certain fields out of the shared configuration, which is the same thing we do with, if we had a pointer on the internal type just for safety, or um, I'm told I have to always, you know, check this bit before I read the field, because if I don't check this other field, then like the value I'm reading out might just be an unset value and be bogus. So it's like the same, I still have to do an operation to check whether or not I should read this thing. So that doesn't really work. Um, yeah, the I wonder if we can, sh can we shove things through struct tags? Are those available at, like, are those mutable at runtime? The what? You know, Go has those the tags on structs, like that structs and metadata. Like you can in the you can use the backticks right after a field and say like JSON, you know, 
field name, emit MP, oh. all that stuff. Um, I wonder if those are mutable at runtime. If we could apply it. If like you can save information inside there. Yeah. Like what's changing or not. I was thinking something simpler but earlier, like have a field, a list of keys, strings that, that were muted by the user. But this will not serialize easier. There is no, no way to serialize it. Yeah. I wonder if we... If you, if you can hold information, metadata on this on this field, like as you said, is one option. I'll try to find something about it. Yeah, that might, that might work. The, it's still something you'd have to, like, I think the one safety concern I have is if we have a field in the, if we have a field in the instance config that is, you know, duplicated in the shared config, I want uh, users to read it out of like a cons like I want the code in Kubelet, for example, to read it out of the same place every time. I don't want random things reading it, some things reading it out of the instance config and some things reading it out of the shared config. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I like some, but, but some of that might be unavoidable if we, if we take for granted that like we might miscategorize something, right? Um, we might miscategorize something as instance specific and then discover it should be shared or we might miscategorize something as shared and then discover it should be instance specific in some cases. And then you, you're in that situation. So unless you refactor the code that was using it um, at the time that you make it available in the other one, you still end up with things reading it from both places. And it's, and, and if, um, if you discover that that's the case, it's really tricky. Like say, say we were using pointer fields, right? So the, say the instance uh, specific one has like some shared fields and we made those pointers so that we could do this overlay and some non-shared fields. Uh, so we didn't make them pointers because we didn't think it was necessary. But then we discover that one of those non-shared fields that wasn't a pointer actually should be in the shared config too. So we have to put it there and then we have to make it a pointer in the like internal instance config. And then we have to go find all the code that referenced it in the internal instance config um, and make sure that all that code is doing null pointer checks. <laughs> no, no, I, th I think that's, that's easy because they are like converging the new Kubelet uh, um, function and from there the cube server structure has all the copies of these things and, and goes down after that. So maybe it's only the beginning of the... Yeah. Yeah, but that, that, that's true. We need to find all the occurrence of these and change them or, to pointers. Or what we do is we, we make them all pointers and we just provide a guarantee um, like um, that all of the pointers will be set before this flows into the application. Okay. So when we, we, we just provide a guarantee that at the end of all of this deserializing magic, any pointer field in any of these objects has a concrete value. Okay, so before the Cobra command start, we are initiating this new configuration, new instance configuration. And here, that's where, of course, the, the initial uh, load of the cube instance in cube config. But in the middle of the command, they start to deserialize this information. So the like the middle of the command that's where that's where we need to find this do this change in grant that all these pointers are, are going to be filled. Right. Now let's see if there's any problems with that. Um the problem is the internal being having pointers, right? Something that we don't want to Yeah, I mean it's not a big it's it's nothing as long as they're all set, um, it shouldn't break any anything that already exists. The, the the worry about this is that the problem they can is be that, null and they can 
break. That, that's why people don't use this in internal. To avoid the, 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 the no. Sure. But it's not like, if, as long as, if we could actually guarantee that they were set, I think it, it wouldn't be a problem. I'm, I'm wondering if that breaks. Um, well, so here's another interesting, interesting point. Um, like I would wonder if that would break the round trip tests if we set them because they were unset in the external. Um, the round trip tests say that you're supposed to be able to read something in and then write it back out and it should be the same as you read it in. Um, and so if, if it's like a mid empty, then we read in, say we read in an empty file or like the kind is set. So you know what type it is, but you read it in and none of the fields are set. So you end up with nil pointers on every field in the external type. Uh, you convert it to the internal type. We also use pointers there. So they're all, all nil. And then we provide this guarantee that like, okay, they're all set. Um, um, well, maybe we just don't apply the round trip. Uh, the, the thing is that that's like a technical requirement of a test that's over here, but we're never, Cuba is probably never going to write this internal type back out. It's just going to read it in. So it might not actually be a requirement of this use case that we satisfy that. And the test I think would still work because whatever magic we do to make sure the pointers are set, isn't going to make it into the round trip test. Because all the round trip, the round trip test is already built to say like, okay, like, you know, here's, it uses a fuzzer. So like, here, here's a random object, read it in, write it back out. Is it the same thing? Um, so I, we might technically get around that. It, it, it doesn't get from the defaults, the, the round trip test. It gets from the fuzzer. It, well, I guess there's, um, there's multiple because uh, Tassin added those other, those tests that are like round trip YAML. Um, but I don't think those tests would, um, would hit this either because I, that whatever, whatever magic we do to make sure the pointers are all set is just going to be a, like a function we call in the bootstrap code or some like loader code. Um, It's, dude, it's getting so freaking complicated, though. Like, <laughs> I feel this is already being solved somewhere, right? <laughs> I, I like. I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. Like the real another another option. Um, could be to. Like, let's take a step back. Let's say we read in, let's say, let's say everything in the external type was pointers and we are just operating on external types. Um, so we, we've, we've read in only to the external types. Can we then merge? It gets like, we have to maybe write more merges, the more API versions we have. Um, or we need to commit the thing is conversions go through the internal type between API versions. So if we got to multiple API versions, like say you got a V1 alpha one instance config and a V1 beta one Cuba config. And, um, do we want to even allow that? I guess is another question. We could just disallow that you if you're providing two config files they're both the must be in the same api version uh might be just a better decision um so okay say they're both the same api version we've we've read in to external types we have the shared one which exists as it already does some pointers some not pointers doesn't really matter instance specific one is all pointers on the external type that's the stage where we do our merge onto the uh, shared external type. And then we convert to the internal types. So at this point, the shared internal type has whichever values, you know, were set from that merge. And the merge was based on 
um, information about whether or not the user actually set the field because it's like maybe pre a pre-default merge. So we deserialize to the external, do the merge or the copy over the internal, then do the defaulting and then do the conversion to the internal types. And then maybe we have one more step after that to copy the uh, any values back from the shared config into the instance config so they're the same values when it's a shared field and any pointers or, and there's there doesn't have to be any pointers on the internal types then because we did the merge on the external types that works if you get the shared as pointers and merge the instance as pointers uh, before defaulting then we default and then we merge again the the fields with values so we get like the default fixing and then the user define it fixing or merge right so let's see if that's possible let's see if that's um let's see if that's possible without making any changes to the existing like api machinery core code okay uh okay i think i think we have a plan about this yeah Still and then we can do list. flags at the end on top of all that okay so the last small thing is that I would try to uh, remove this chunk of code that starts these things and put in a function to facilitate the testing. Otherwise, I need to test the entire Cobra command with the run. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Um, whatever you have to do to refactor it so it's more testable. Uh, okay, dude. I think think you have a plan about this. These things it can work, maybe. Awesome. Maybe. Yeah. We have to figure out if we have the APIs to, to make it work. <laughs> cool. But all right, cool. Looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Nice. Awesome, man. All right. Take care. I'll upload the recording too later today. So we have that for notes. Cool. Thanks. Cheers.